Hello everyone and welcome back to my Ultimate JNSQ series in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video we are looking to send something out to Minmus, but we are also looking to get the technology we need to do interplanetary probes. We have some science available there. And so where do we get the antennae that we need? One of the problems with having so many parts is that it's really hard to see uh, what is what here and find the parts that we need. Uh, well, that's that's a well, though, though that's a radar altimeter. I don't know what I'm gonna do with a radar altimeter. Oh, it's a scansat thing. See, I mean, it looks like a dish, but it's not really a dish that we need. That's also a radar altimeter. Uh, it's been a long time since I used scansat, so there's a lot of scansat stuff here. It seems. I mean, I think maybe the easiest thing to do is just to upgrade the tracking station, and that will give us our level two comms, and that might be good enough. But it would be nice to have a really solid relay dish. Right now, to get the moon probes, we've been using just direct antennae. That's an interesting part right there. It shows up even before it's in the field. EVA repair kit. It's special. <laughs> Look at that. Helical antenna array. Well, that looks pretty nice. It's got good range, I think. I don't know, uh, 1.2 million kilometers. Let's see what we need. That's level two. Duna is 58 million kilometers away though. Uh, 56 million kilometers away. So 56 gigameters. If Kerbin and Duna are opposite of each other, it's gonna be a longer distance. Well, this one is getting closer, this communication array. We need 56 gigameters. This, this provides 43 at level two. So it's still not good enough. And again, it's 56 plus some, so probably we would need what's given at level 3 there, not just level 2. But at least there's something that's in the ballpark. Everything's been giving me 1 gigameter at most. Well, here's another one that would work at level 3, but not earlier. This one will work at level 2, but it's an advanced exploration. So we would have to unlock the R&D building as well in order to get it. Well, I don't know if this is combinable or not. If we can put more than one on, then maybe it'll work out. Well, I don't know if this is combinable or not, but if we can put more than one on, then maybe it'll work out. But we certainly need the level 2 DSN, so let's see. Let's just upgrade it. We'll get our patch conics. As interesting as it would be to do an interplanetary journey without patch conics visible, I think we should just go for it. And we've already gotten the mission control upgrade. And I don't think we need the pad upgrade yet. We'll uh, attempt, attempt this without that for now. We've got explore Minmus, flyby Minmus, and return to Kerbin from a flyby of Minmus, which is, seems to be easy, Well, which is fine. Um, let's do that. And... They want us to adjust delta. Uh, that's not worth my time. Polar orbit of the moon. Once we get the resource scanner, that would be nice. We've got some duration on that. So we've got room for seven contracts. We can pick that up and then once we get the resource scanner, we can put it into that orbit and that'll be handy. Though I have to remember with ScanSat, the resource scanner doesn't work the same way. So since we're headed down this way for the antennae anyway, I'll get basic science here. That seems the most logical thing. And we will continue to try and unlock stuff here. Oh, we've got the VAB music suddenly for some reason. Just completely randomly happens. I don't think we need the boosters for this one. We just need to fly by and return. This seems like a pretty good setup. Maybe I'll put the boosters back on. Just to have mission assurance, if you will. We I don't think we need the goo. Fly by Minmus, return from fly by Minmus, that's it. Uh, let's save ourselves. I mean, but then, you know, we might as well do the goo. But we only need, uh, we don't need the goo containers because it already has a goo 
in the little, uh, whatchamacallit, Hermes recovery module. This visibly has some thrusters on it in RCS, but it doesn't have any RCS propellant, mob propellant built in. I guess that's in a different part of the nose cone assembly. Minmus is further out though. This little probe core just barely had enough to communicate with the moon. So we need to add some comms. And wow, there's a lot of comm dishes actually. Wait, 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 I forgot. We just upgraded the tracking station. So maybe I don't have to go through all of these. Let's just take a look at what our little amber probe can do with a level two DSN. Oh, 507,000 kilometers. That should be good enough. I think Minmus is like 150,000 or so. So I think, yeah, it's not five times the distance of the moon. We should be all right. So, okay, we can we can just go with this. I think, I think we are good to go. Just taking a look at our antennae though, maybe we should just peruse whether there's something that can actually, with a level two, reach Duna already. I'm looking for gigameters here. There's 1.5, but that's not gonna be enough. Oh, this one's 16.3. But we'll have to keep that one in mind. You know what? Let's unlock that, because that's our uh, good long range one. We'll have to see. This one's 16. No, uh, this one's the same as that one. It's just nice and thin. Okay, well, those are the two longest range ones we have right now. They'll give us 16, which is not good enough for Duna. So, we continue to need signs to unlock better ones. Alright, but let's take this out and see if we can reach Minmus. wonder if I'll ever get Megjeb's smart ASS. Don't have it right now. Okay, well, Minmus has an inclination, but we're not going to worry about that. Uh, I think... With a probe, we can just do an off-plane transfer. So, anyway, uh, no funny artifacts right now. So, Ad Astra is doing all the nice work for me now. SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition, and launch. At some point, I'll need to launch when it's not like right at dawn so that we can get some other color on the water. Okay, separation and ignition, and fairings. A little bit early on the fairings, but... The world still feels small. That curvature, though. I should probably not be skirting things so tightly. The probe core is getting overheated. Calm line is potentially getting a little bit stretched here. Okay, we're communicating through Gamma 2 now. I will just dump this stage so that we don't have space junk. Okay, now well, let's... I think... Maybe 30 kilometers will be good for disposal, we'll see. Separation. And let me just double check our comms. We're over here. I don't even see the line to... Where's Gamma 2? Oh, Gamma 2's back there. Okay. Oh, that's not too bad. Alright. Okay, well, lopsided orbit, but good enough for me. And saves us from any sort of trouble with the comms. So, setting Mimis as a target. Uh, we'll just hit Mimis over here, I guess. I don't want to do a mid-course adjustment. Six degree inclination difference around here. So, we have an encounter in nine days. Uh, keeping in mind, I've got 24 hour days, so... We're going past Mimis and then heading back in. Still about 1500 meters per second, not much different from... Oh, I don't even have the maneuver node editor. Guess we can just use this one down here. Uh, that's a bit sad. 
should be that if you've got this functionality, the maneuver node editor should be unlocked, one would think. Okay, well, that's a close flyby of Minmus. And actually, that's a free return trajectory. So that's just fine. Free return in 14 days, we'd have to tweak it a little bit. It's 941 kilometers, but yeah, that looks great, actually. This does have the telemetry report. I'm just going to start it now so that I don't forget. Okay. Okay. Well, it's a little bit high there. Not the nicest free return, but it's still a free return. Um, it's sort of polar around here. I have trouble sort of burning efficiently enough. We seem to have a direct line. Let me just make sure of that before I turn the engine on again. All right, yeah, we'll have it for a while. Let me try and do a thrust limit on this and see if that helps me do a fine tune burn here. But I want the periapsis low over Minmus. I don't mind that the periapsis around Kerbin is high. Let's let's take this. I don't know if that's low enough to get low over Minmus. I think low over Minmus was like 25 kilometers in stock, and we've scaled up by a factor of more than two, so maybe it's low over Minmus. But we'll find out. Okay, let's get out there. Well, our comms are great with this probe core now. We're we're past the orbit of Minmus here, and we've got 74 percent. Uh oh, it's hiding my Minmus encounter now because it's being mean. But yeah, we never need another probe core again. <laughs> hmm. Chatterer, I feel like it wants to do beeps, but it's not doing beeps. Yeah, I want some beeps every every minute. Okay. We are in Minmus SOI for the first time. Telemetry report, telemetry report seems to be done. I'm going to do some mystery goo too. Flyby Minmus is confirmed. Trapped radiation measurements. Oh, well, there's a trapped radiation data thing that's completely separate from the regular science thing. I guess I'll transmit that. I, I don't know if we can even, because when I transmit it, it doesn't say that we got those, so... Yeah, I don't know what that's about either. Okay, we might be transmitting just... we're transmitting bytes at a time. I think that's what's going on. We have so little bandwidth. Oh, we got beeps. Okay. Those are not the beeps I was looking for, though. Let's set that one. That sounds cute. Well, so we're probably not going to get Minmus space low anything here. The telemetry report is running, or trying to run. So if we add the space, we'd get the in space low. So this is an okay altitude for that. Just wanted to check. This, is, this does count as low. Anyway, contract-wise, we just need to go back to Kerbin. So let us do that. I don't know that there's any real struggle sending a Kerbal out here, so we should send a Kerbal out here, maybe. But we'll see what contract it gives us. It should give us a follow-up contract for Minmus. Probably it wants a landing. Okay, we are out of Minmus SOI. Sort of lopsided orbit, but we're going to just bring it down so that we get back into the atmosphere of Kerbin. Engine failed? No, And it says it's gone for good. Now it killed an engine. We were wondering when it would do that. Okay, we've got a critical failure on the engine. We can't bring this back. Uh, well, it'll be hanging out long enough for it to transmit all that data, I think. Well, Kerbalism could have 
done this at a much more critical time. This is not too bad. I wonder if we would re-encounter Minmus ever. Well, we're wasting time here. We have windows to meet eventually. Okay, so I'll just leave this be. Let's go back to Space Center. Uh, well, anyway, the next science would take 90, not 45, so... Yeah, we don't have enough for the next science yet. We need to land something on Nimbus. It doesn't have a new exploration contract. Or a new position satellite or anything. Science day from space around Minmus, though. We certainly can pick that up. We will send a probe that has more science. We need more science. So we'll basically be doing that mission over, but I'm gonna put extra science and maybe some redundancy on the engines. We'll see. Okay, so I have added some things to our probe. I've added these big high gain antennae, which were the best that we've got. And mainly in this case, we don't need the range, we need the bandwidth. It's got the high max speed for the data transmission. Uh, There's about 24 times what the probe itself can do. And we've got two of them, so that'll be a significant increase to our data transmission rate. I think that is also the best among all the stuff that we have. So yeah, if we can transmit faster, then we don't need storage. And I can't even find where we've got extra storage except for what we have built in and we can increase right here. Uh, so I tried looking for extra hard drive space, I couldn't find it. So that is what we're going with. Now I've also slapped on the thermometer here and so we'll have that and we also have a Geiger counter and a micrometeoroid package. These are very expensive but I sorted the science by mass because otherwise you got a lot of things and it's a little bit difficult to figure out what to send. So I decided to go with the light stuff and the stuff, these things are really expensive so it's good that we're bringing them back. Um, I don't know what the info pop up but folding mag magnetometer boom uh, I'll think about. I was actually wanting to go for the barometer, but they've limited it to the situations where we already know that there's atmosphere, which somebody doesn't understand science because we don't know whether there's an atmosphere in Minmus, so we need to check. That's So you should have it in space low at least, uh, just to check. And in fact, there may be some pressure in the vacuum of space that you might want to check up on. Depends on the sensitivity of your barometer. Uh, it's worth running the test. It, it's worth running the test no matter where you are. But since they have uh, prevented us from doing that because they know too much, <laughs> basically, uh, I guess we will avoid that one. And uh, we're sort of slightly imbalanced because we've got instruments on three sides. And unfortunately, this nuclear package, which is the right mass, though I guess they apply the mass to the center part. I don't know if that's true here or not, but I assume so. But it's really expensive, this one. Uh, extending rubidium magnetometer can apparently scan for ore, but I don't know. It's got a long duration though, and we're not planning to get into orbit around Minmus, but maybe we should get into orbit around Minmus just for this. So that's a tough call. It seems doable though as far as its data rate is concerned. I don't know how it's going to work out with ScanSat though. But is this basically a replacement for the resource scanner? Because it seems like that. I'll get it and we'll slap it on. Uh, uh oh. I guess it's surface attach only. Gosh darn it. Not surface attach, sorry, node attach only. And I don't have a little cubic octagonal strut. Do I have a cubic octagonal strut now? No, I don't have any small attachment point, I don't think. And we don't even have a radial attachment point. So yeah, we can't do that. This uh, radiation emulsions thing is like a goo container. It doesn't really have a data rate or anything like that. 
Maybe that's a good thing in this case. Maybe. All right, well, it's balancing everything. Well, we had a engine failure last time here, but aside from these finches, do any of the other engines surface mount? Because otherwise we can't really put them on. I really want the smallest engine possible as a backup engine. But we don't have mod propellant tanks that are small enough. They have all these built-in orbital propulsion systems, but we don't want that. There's a radial crow engine, which is basically the same as the finch. I don't know why I would want to unlock that when I already have this finch. So we'll just have the finch. Alright, we're using these finches as backups. Since that cuts down on our Delta V, I think we'll add boosters. I'm tempted to add some backups to the rest of this too. Let's just put some more... Finches are always good. Just put some more finches as backups. Oh, 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 but I've hit the part count limit. No! We have too many parts. Shoot. Yeah, that will happen. I need boosters at least. Maybe we should take a risk. I mean... Let's just increase the engine quality on this. Hi. But we still need to save two parts. We can have it stand on the boosters. Wait a second, this folding solar panel is an antenna, or...? Apparently, this solar panel, deployable solar panel, has antennae capabilities. I want to see this. Oh, it's pretty big though. Apparently it's got the antennae on it. Well, not what I want to use right now, but it's worth thinking about. We've got an RTG right there. Tiny RTG, 0.2 per second. Well, we consume 0.3, but we could put two on. It's not that expensive, it's only 500 a piece. Well, I mean, it sounds like something that we might eventually want. Wow, they're small too. Perpetual. We don't even have to... Oh, well, that's three of them though. It said 0.2 per second, but here it says 0.45. As if they're generating 1, 0.15 per second. I mean, it's still probably a good deal, especially since we're bringing them back. But we're not adding batteries. Well, we've got little RTGs now. It says perpetual. Well, we could find some boosters that have built-in nose cones. These seem to have built-in nose cones. They aren't as efficient as the ones we have right now, or as powerful though. I think uh, it's basically identical to this one, it just has the nose cone, so that seems like a pretty good deal. Uh, over mass, but I think we can change the type. Algol works. Hopefully it can balance. We don't have to clamp at the bottom because we don't have enough part count. So we're going with high reliability on the engine in order to make up for the fact that we don't have backups. I don't know if we should do that for some of the other engines. We've been tempting fate so far. How much does it cost to do high reliability on this one? It's about three, a little bit less than 3,000, so it's pretty expensive. I'm not expecting them to go for that long. Though this is com coming close. 3 minutes and 50 seconds versus 5 minutes and 50 seconds. I guess, I mean, that's 
you know, less than a thousand. We'll go high quality on that one too. Okay. Well, Epsilon 3A. Let's see if it works. Okay, here we go. And the hydrogen is boiling off. Actually, it's boiled off quite a lot. But I, oh, I think we'll be okay. Let's just go. I waited a little bit. SAS on, throttle is up, and launch. Actually, let's throttle down there. Well, these with the extra nozzles don't seem to have as much gimbling control. So, we've been cast a little bit steeper than I was intending. Alright. Okay, and... Staging, and ignition, and fairings. Alright, looking good. Okay, we are in space, so I'm gonna try to extend those antennae. Nope, not the thermoelectric generator. I had to place them the way they were, otherwise they would clip the heat shield on extension. And we can start some experiments. Uh, we don't have to do that one here. I want to collect radiation emulsions from... Minmus, of course. But micrometeoroid impact detection can happen here. It'll take six hours to complete, though. Photographs? Maybe you can do photographs. It says 14 hours. It we already filled up with data? That was quick. The micrometeoroid impact data is just too fast. Okay, okay, okay. Um, and we have nowhere... Oh, we lost comms. Oh, no. That's not good. Uh-oh. I was too busy. I wasn't paying attention. Oh, no. Well, um, well, actually, we're not at the worst time for Minmus, <laughs> as it turns out. Really, I'd like to delay a little bit more than this, but this is not impossible. I throttled down before we lost communications, so we're now on a very, very, very long burn indeed. This probe apparently... well, that's pretty high up, that Epsilon one. Um, okay, now we've got comms. Let's just stop it right there. Okay, so... I think um, we'll, we'll just stop transmitting that one. I, I want... can you just focus on one place that we're gonna get photographs from? How long does it take to do the 131 bytes, exactly? I tried looking for extra hard drive space, I swear. 5 kilobytes per second is all we're getting. So we're getting maybe a tenth of our capacity, even though we're right next to Kerbin. Let me just stop the taking photographs. If we run that, how long is the micrometeorite one going to take? 14 days, though. I'm, I don't have that kind of patience right now. Okay, anyway, focusing back on Minmus. They're not too bad off, uh, even though we had that extra burn time. Okay, that seems fine. Well, our transmission rate is increasing. Well, up to 8 kilobits per second, I guess. We're getting some science. Importantly, our little RTGs are working. Okay, we got a temperature scan. Oh, we lost comms. Well, let's see if we get it back in time for the burn. Uh, we do. Let's see if it's going to be stable. KSC's over here. 
Um, I wish we had a satellite overhead though. It may be okay. Well, certainly be okay for this stage. Since we can just let the stage run out anyway. And go. Okay, separation. Ignition. Reassess comms. Oh, we, we're communicating through uh, that one, Gamma. So we're okay. Oh, oh. We've had our first artifact. Uh, okay, it's gone. <laughs> okay, let's see how we're doing. Got 19 more ignitions, in theory. Oh, we've got a moon flyby. We're not actually quite hitting Minmus because of that moon flyby, I think. Here's an extra ignition. Uh, oh, okay, that's going up on the periapsis there. Okay, four days. And there's not a whole lot of point to the photographs. I think if we keep running the micrometeoroid impact, well, it's trying to do in space low. We're going to end up high pretty soon. Well, I would have thought, there we go. Um, let's just get rid of the rest of the low. It's possible we'll get done. Eight days. Now, which day is that? 12 hour or 24 hour? Oh, I didn't like time warping because of our RTG. Yeah, this is the maximum time warp we can do. Yep. Incoherent behavior. We're getting some radiation scans from the Geiger counter. Well, I'll just time warp in the tracking station. Hopefully that will not have any incoherent behavior with it. Oh, we actually got the Kerbin Space High done just before getting into Minmus Space. Okay, well, it's trying to make it seem like I'm not going to encounter Minmus right there. There we go. Okay, we have encountered. Temperature scan already done from Minmus Space High. Let's go to it. And it's already started the micrometeoroid impact data for Minmus. Okay, what kind of effect does a real burn in have on our Kerbin periapsis, though? Because I do want to get close to Minmus this time. The temperature scan and the Geiger counter should do something there. Now it does raise the Kerbin periapsis, but we do have a lot of delta V. We'll get the nuclear package high up here. Collect radiation emulsion, uh, emulsions, yeah. Is it collecting radiation emulsions? I hope so. It doesn't indicate that it's doing anything. Hmm. Maybe I'm in the wrong biome and I forgot to check it for this one. We have 74 days until the Duna window. I think maybe we should make orbit and then hang out and get a whole lot of science from here. Maybe photography, even. But uh, our periapsis is on the opposite side of Minmus from Kerbin, so we're going to have to wait until we're a little bit past it in order to capture. Or, well, it's not going to block for long, at least. No more electric charge. What are you talking about? We have RTGs. Nonsense is that. Okay, well anyway, we've got we're getting electric charge back. And let us make orbit. Is uh look at Mimus here. And let's get the orbital info and go. So, can we get the micrometeoroid impact data from Minmus Space Low? 
and how long will that take and then maybe we'll try I don't know, the nuclear package doesn't seem to be doing anything, but we should get mystery goo we can run that this collect radiation emulsions we're, we're not getting any samples from that even though we were supposed to I'm basically done with the Geyer counter and thermometer it's just photographs Oh, uh, we want the telemetry too. Let's just get the telemetry done. Oh, we're losing power right now. Okay, well the telemetry took a lot of power. I think the mystery goo observation takes a lot of effort, apparently. Effort that Kerbalism was not expecting. Okay, but it is done. Eight days. Well, let's hang out. Of course, we can't always transmit. And for some reason, we lose electric charge when we're not transmitting. Yes, because it's trying to find a signal. Anyway, we'll put up with that. Most of the time, we have a signal. Okay, I think I'll do this in the tracking station because otherwise we're limited with that incoherent behavior message. Nice that it keeps this up for us. I didn't even have the craft selected. Uh, I, I, if I time warp too fast, it just keeps the connection in progress thing. Okay, we've got Mimus Space Low Micro Meteoroid Impact Data. 67 days. Shall we take some pictures? I mean, we need the science. 14 days. We've transmitted 56.2 credits. So we have enough for the at least 190 science tier science. I don't know what you want to call it, but yeah. Well, there's too many biomes because it's based on the surface biome. So it'll constantly change which biome we're doing. Yeah, it'll take forever at this rate. I think we need to bring it back now. Okay, well, we finally get to plot our return trip. I think because of comms, I'm just going to escape first and then bring the orbit down. We do not have comms for very long. All right, let's just go. Okay, we have an escape. Okay, we're back in Kerbin space. Hey, here we can take some photographs. 14 days. I, again, it depends on what kind of day we're talking about, but I don't think we're going to get done with it. Okay, and that's good enough for me. All right. Coming back with our RTGs, very expensive science experiments, including one that didn't quite work, that nuclear one. Okay, packing up the high gain antennae. Taking radiation damage. Well, don't do that. Well, just in case, I'm going to arm the parachute now. And checking our periapsis, seems fine. All right, well, I mean, Coming back from Inbus, who knows, but off we go. Oh, we lost comms. Just before we lost comms. I don't know if it's going to be reorienting itself in the atmosphere or not. SAS tends to have too much of a hold on these things. Okay, we're in the atmosphere with some tilt. And that stuff overheated. We need to turn. Okay, okay. That's orienting. But the heat shield is overheating a bit, as it has done before. Okay, we've survived that. Whereabouts are we? Well, nowhere near the space center, I don't think. Uh. 
Oh wait, uh, it's over there. Yeah, well, a quarter of Kerbin away. Hey, we've got the ice flows again. <laughs> Can't escape them. I'll think about turning them off, but... I, I specifically wanted Parallax, so, you know. Is it the case that this Kerbin is oriented like 90 degrees away from the other Kerbin, such that we get a lot of ice flows in the at the equator, but not at the pole? I don't know. Okay, we have full parachute deployment, 4 meters per second. Right next to an ice flow. And splash down. Oh, please don't sink, don't sink. Okay, I think I got to it in time. That was a very expensive probe. We cannot let it sink to the bottom of the ocean. We do have some floats available to us. But we might need to increase the part count available in order to put them on. Okay, 12 science for just the recovery, and then we got all this other science too. So now we've got lots of science. And, well, it was 54.4% of the total value, but that was still 5,000 funds. So we got some back, and we got the... Aim at the moon and miss. Yeah, that's a different one. Yeah, we got the contract done. So we're in good shape. The other stuff is all moon. Some of it a little bit dodgy, but landing on the moon might be a nice thing. Just to get the scientific data, you know. But we would need them to be able to disembark. Let's see. We need 450,000 to get more than 30 parts. And there's the 150,000 to let them EVA. Can't do that. And then 18 tons. We haven't really needed to yet, but maybe we will soon. Anyway, that's a lot to think about uh, along with what we're going to spend the science on. I will leave that for the next episode. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.